Bentley Priory at Stanmore in Middlesex, home of Fighter Command since it was formed in 1936. Now the command which won the Battle of Britain has been disbanded and Air Marshal Sir Frederick Rosier, Commander-in-Chief, reviews the final parade. Since the war, attitudes and emphasis have changed. No longer is the RAF the front line of our defence. Although Fighter Command will live on as part of Strike Command, the leading role it played in the 1940s can never be revived. Nevertheless, to that role and the men who played it, we are all forever in debt. Men like Air Vice Marshal Johnny Johnson, Group Captain Peter Townsend, Wing Commander Stanford Tuck, and besides Sir Frederick Rosier, Air Commodore Al Deer, Group Captain Douglas Bader, and Air Commodore Peter Brothers. Stanford Tuck, DSO, DFC, twice wounded, bailed out four times, 27 confirmed victories. The incredible Douglas Bader, DSO, DFC, who lost both legs before the war, returned to fly fighters, became wing commander, was taken prisoner of war, and returned to lead the first Battle of Britain fly past in 1945. Just some of the few to whom all of us owe so much. The fighters are our salvation, said Churchill, but the bombers alone provide the means of victory. A wartime Lancaster at Scampton, Lincolnshire, to mark the disbandment of Bomber Command. Dr. Barnes Wallace, designer of the Dambuster bomb. It was from here that the famous Dambuster squadron operated. Dr. Wallace with Wing Commander Roderick Leroy at Bomber Command VC. Bomber Command will also become part of the new Strike Command. Bomber Harris, the command's wartime leader, and Lord Portal, chief of air staff during the war. A fly past of V bombers. And the pennant of the new strike command is broken up. We live at a time when heroic traditions must give way to a new concept. Strike command is the logical, realistic answer. First, the Formula 3 event at Silver 